All right, thank you to Carl Keller for presenting sections one and two. My name is Ronnie Oakes, and I'll take you through sections three and four. In section three, we'll talk about free relief and what players' options are for taking relief from loose impediments, movable obstructions, abnormal course conditions, and embedded ball. We'll start with loose impediments. A loose impediment is a natural object that is not attached to anything, not part of something growing, isn't solidly embedded in the ground, and is not sticking to your ball. Some examples of loose impediments are stones, loose grass, leaves, branches and sticks, pine needles and pine cones. Other items that are also considered loose impediments are small animals like worms and insects, clumps of compacted soil, including aeration plugs, but sand and loose soil are not considered loose impediments. Also, animal waste and dead animals are considered loose impediments. You're allowed to remove loose impediments from anywhere on or off the course, but you need to be careful when you do that. If your ball moves when you remove a loose impediment, you'll get a one-stroke penalty and you'll need to replace the ball. There are some exceptions that will impact your ability to move loose impediments. You're not allowed to remove a loose impediment where your ball is to be replaced, and you're not allowed to remove a loose impediment that de to deliberately affect a ball in motion. Okay, on to movable obstructions. Unlike loose impediments, which are natural objects, a movable obstruction is an artificial object that can be moved with reasonable effort and without causing damage to the course or the obstruction. Movable obstructions can be moved whether they are on or off the course. And again, we have some exceptions. When playing from the teeing area, you're not allowed to move the tee markers and you're not allowed to move an obstruction to deliberately affect a ball in motion. When your ball is touching a movable obstruction and it moves as a result of moving the obstruction, there's no penalty and you simply replace the ball in its original spot. If the original spot, spot is not known, estimate the spot and place the ball on that spot. Now we'll move on to abnormal course conditions. An abnormal course condition is any one of these defined conditions. An animal hole, ground under repair, immovable obstruction, or temporary water. You have interference from an abnormal course condition when your ball touches or is in or on the abnormal course condition, or when the abnormal course condition physically interferes with your area of in intended swing or stance. You also have interference when your ball is on the putting green and the condition intervenes on your line of play. In these cases, you're allowed free relief from abnormal course condition. In some instances, relief from an abnormal course condition is not allowed. You don't get free relief when your ball is in a penalty area or when the abnormal course condition is not on the course. You're also not allowed to, to have free relief when it's clearly unreasonable to play the ball due to some other situation or by choosing an unreasonable stance or direction of play. When taking relief from an abnormal course condition in the general area, you'll first need to determine your reference point, which is the nearest point of complete relief. Then drop your ball in the relief area, which is defined as one club length from the reference point, no closer to the hole than the reference point, and in the general area. When determining your reference point, you need to find the spot that's closest to where the ball came to rest. Here's a common situation of a ball coming to rest on the cart path and the player needs to determine the location where complete relief would be closest to the original ball's location. In this example we can see that the nearest point of relief is going to be on the left side of the cart path. Now let's talk about embedded ball. For the ball to be embedded we need to meet two requirements. The ball must be in its own pitch mark and a part of the ball must be below the level of the ground. If these two conditions are met, then the ball is embedded and you're entitled to free relief. 
If we look at the examples on the right and the, the middle example, we can see that the ball is not touching the soil, but as long as part of the ball is below the surface of the ground, it is considered embedded. When taking relief for an embedded ball, you're going to first locate the reference point, which for an embedded ball is the spot right behind where the ball is embedded. Then you'll drop in the relief area, which is one club length from the reference point, not nearer the hole, and in the general area. This concludes section three. Any questions?